Good day. I'm Larry Dunlop, and we're here talking with the Dawn Richardson. Dawn Richardson, many of you may not know, or hopefully you do know, won May 24th two times in three attempts. Can you hear that? Welcome to the program, Dawn. Thanks, Larry. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm here in Manchester, UK. Where's your location? I'm in Darlington, which is in the northeast of England, just underneath Newcastle. Yes, you're way up north. So, yeah, I think it gets a bit colder where you are than where I am. (laughs) Yeah, we have snow this week. (laughs) I'm going to stay here in Manchester. (laughs) Yeah, we are delighted to have you, Dawn. Um, We know you left Bermuda uh, maybe a year or two after your last competition. So it has been a while. but again, excited to see you and to talk to you about your, uh, your, your titles, but also you, I think you got second and your third attempt. You'll talk about that as, a, as well. However, before that, just like for people to know a little bit about, and I call you the Dawn Richardson. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> tell us a little bit about your, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your, your like your, your running upbringing uh, in terms of your athletic background. Uh, were you always a, a runner from, from little or just tell us a little bit about that? Um, I've always run. I was made to run at school because no one else wanted to. I had to do cross country. Um, and because I was made to run around the school fields in the snow, I hate running and I still hate running now. But I'm very <laughs> grateful that my PE teachers made me do it now. But at the time, I didn't want to do it. But yeah, I was forced <laughs> to run as a child. So, and it's so, just carried on. Ain't that something? You were forced to run, and lo and behold, look, look at the success that for, being forced to run, ha, you, you have mm-hmm. been able to achieve. That's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. So, when we talk about, like, age, you're talking about, like, you started running, what, age of five, six, seven, eight, nine? It was sort of, you know, some years. Uh, no, we're talking. no, I was secondary school. I was probably um, 13, 12, 13, when I was made to run. Yeah. <laughs> Did you play any other sports before that? Um, just the usual hockey, netball, but I wasn't really any good at anything. So um, <laughs> I think my teachers had the favourites for hockey, netball, and anyone else had to go <laughs> running around the field. <laughs> That's interesting. Interesting. So, um, so you start. So you, again, you're forced to run at, at, at the age of thirteen. Um, and so, were you like put in a club, any structured sort of program, or what? Tell no, no, it was just, just cross country at school um, in the winter and then on the track in the summertime. Um, okay. So no, I was never, I never, I don't think I was ever that good. So I wasn't made to go to the Harriers or to the children's clubs. But in hindsight, that was a good thing because I know I can still run now. Whereas maybe if I overtrained when I was younger, um, I might not be able to do what I do now. So in one, in one respect, it was great. I didn't have to do that, but I wasn't that good to be fair at the time. <laughs> but you was you was just sort of like uh, how could I put it? Your progress was slow but steady. So you mentioned the track there because, as you know, a lot of the May twenty fourth participants and winners, both male and female in Bermuda, many of them had a track background. So tell us a little about the. the you said you had to you run on the track. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I was still a distant runner. I, I always had to do the 800s or the 1500s because nobody else wanted to do it. So I'm, I'm not a speed runner. I hate speed work. Um, I'm no good at 5Ks. I'm definitely half marathon, marathon. I'm a distant runner. Um, so, yeah, um, certainly 1500s was my forte at the time when I was younger. And now I'd hate to do that distant. <laughs> Interesting. It and and you know that sort of laid the foundation because you said like you know you was forced to do the eight hundred to fifteen and I guess obviously you, you, you had to move up. So you kind of knew what sort of what your strengths were from way back then, being more of a ten k half half marathon runner. Am, am I correct? I didn't know any strengths until um, I joined the navy. And then um, I ran for the Navy and it wasn't until someone t- took me under the wing did they say, do you realise you can run? 
And I'm like, no, no, I don't. And then this particular person made me enter a race. And I, I don't know whether I won it, but I was I was well up there. Um, and the next what day... What distance? I'm curious. What distance do you remember the I distance? I think it was a 10K. And then the next day we went back into the office and it was like, oh, my word, you can run. And I was like, <laughs> Tana. So then, then I left the Navy. I came back to Darlington. I joined a running club. Um, I did my first marathon. And then someone said, you can run, you know, you've got a knack for the marathon. So then I started to train for the marathons. And I think that's probably where I'm happiest at. Um, because I can't do speed, um, I kind of went more towards marathon training. Interesting. I, in doing a little bit of research, because I was trying to like find out who is the Dawn Richardson, this two-time winner. <laughs> Even when I was in Bermuda, I still didn't know a whole lot about you. But any 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 woman or man that wins and then wins twice, that you know, you take note. So I was like, gee, what's the ones running back wrong? We're we're all started, you know. And then of course, talking to you previously, you gave me a little snippet. But marathoning is something that I that as I did a little bit of research on, um, excuse me, you 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 you're a sub three hour marathon runner. Mm, yeah. Um you have broken the three hour barrier um, prior to coming to going, coming to Bermuda and your first victory being 2006. Am I correct, 2004, you broke the three hour barrier for the marathon? I've done Can it you a few times. I've done it a few times. I think I've done it five or six times, but they've normally have always been in London Marathon, but I can't think when I started. I remember doing, um, um, I did a 318 by accident and then I jumped to a 311 and then I went sub three, probably by accident, to be fair. <laughs> by I accident. Did. I love that. I think it, it probably so all humble. happened in London. <laughs> <laughs> a three hour marathon, sub three by accident. Wow. So I had humble. a fabulous no coach. I was coached yeah. by a guy called Kev Shevels in, in Darlington. Um, there was a team, you know, him and his mate used to coach me. And so I, I owe it all to Kev Shevels of the Quakers Running Club um, because he took me under his wing. Brilliant. Brilliant. So your marathon background training, if, if I can say, kind of prepared you as you now decided to uh, come to Bermuda, go to Bermuda. And then so tell us, so you were in the UK. So tell us as leading up to, to 2006, which was your first uh, Mar um, May 24th uh, participation. Did you know much about the race itself prior? Um, no, not really. I knew there was going to be a big race in the May um, and it was always advertised as um, May 24th Marathon Derby. So I had presumed it was a marathon so even before <laughs> I came over. I'd started marathon training not realizing there was rules in place that you had to be there for six months, etc. cetera. Um, so when I got to Bermuda, I thought, oh, that's great. I don't have to do 20 mile runs anymore. It's only a half, but it was always called the marathon. So I, I misinterpreted that. <laughs> so I wouldn't say you overtrain. Obviously your training was tailor made because you had that endurance for, um, the, for, the, for the 13 miles being used to running 26. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you came, so just tell us about the, you know, leading right into May 24th, you, um, you came over, uh, what, a couple of months before or, and, and then you entered. So just talk to us, just, just that period leading right into entering. And then of course, well, I we came six weeks before not having a clue what I was doing. I've never been to the news before. <laughs> I don't even know what I was doing there to be fair, but I came six weeks beforehand. I joined Mac and Swans. Yes. Um, entered the half marathon not knowing there was rules and um protocol in place yes um i did a 5k race and then i got a phone call from the organizer who said we you can't run it's you haven't been here for six months um and when you entered, you didn't tell us you were, a, you know, an 18 minute 5K runner. <laughs> I said, well, well, no one asked me, but I didn't realize. And I said, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't realize there was rules in place. Don't worry about it. And then um, I got a phone call a few weeks later saying, we're going to let you race. And I was like, fabulous. Thanks ever so much. You know, it's a heat, the humidity. 
there's no chance I can ever win it. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll probably finish in an ambulance. Um, and that was that was it. So I was very grateful to the organisers to let me to let me race. And I remember vividly getting the phone call in the office, and um, because my parents were coming over on holiday to watch it, and I was like, something. I'm not allowed to race. And then they changed their minds. So I was very very grateful for them to do that for me. <laughs> well, I mean that's I mean that's that's a story in itself, Dawn. Um, Because, you know, uh, I can't remember, I can't remember all the details, but the fact that you were allowed to run and then you went on. So in entering the race, so did you know who might be, who were the top female competitors or anything like that? Did you know any of the the runners? No, no idea. I literally just thought I'd just jog it out and try not to collapse with the heat because it's quite a late start in those days. Um, And I wasn't used to the heat of the humidity. Um, so yeah, I just I just wanted to run, and it was even to this day, it's probably like my, my most favorite event. The fact that people camped out the night beforehand, the they lay the pitches down on on Front Street, the carnival atmosphere. It's just the best thing I've ever <laughs> experienced. It really is. I think it's a phenomenal event, and well done to Bermuda for hosting it. Yeah, you know it's funny we consider it sort of our Olympic event because the winner on both the men and, and female category. You saw like crown like the champion for the whole year. So oh, wow. it's incredible. So so any pressure. So you really didn't feel any pressure that, that no. first year? No, none. No. I just thoroughly enjoyed it. Um and a little miracle happened that, you know, I just um I think I maybe got into first place with maybe two miles, a mile and a half left to go. And I just thought, just don't mess it up. Just do not mess it up and yeah. just think how, how proud my parents will be. So yeah, yeah I just kept on pushing on. The the um the woman, the lady that you passed in to win that first was Karen Bodarge, who actually uh was a triathlete. And yes. looking at her time, she finished maybe uh some 20 seconds behind you. So it was a close, I guess you overtook her late in the race uh oh, to actually completely. capture capture the, the, the title. So, mm-hmm. so boy, and no pressure, ain't that something? Yeah, so we're gonna totally enjoyable. We're, <laughs> Unlike the second time when the pressure was on, <laughs> and we will talk about that. And so, we're here talking with uh, Dawn Richardson again. I'm Larry Dunlop, um, and we will be right back. Healthy people in healthy communities. The barriers people with disabilities face begin with people's attitudes. Disability is only one part of the person. Look beyond the disability and see someone who goes to work, has a family, does laundry, gets angry, cries, laughs and dreams like everyone else. Awareness, the first step towards change. This is a message from the Department of Health. Welcome back. I'm Larry Dunlop, and we're talking to two-time May 24th marathon champion, the female category, Dawn Richardson. Hello, Dawn. Hi, Larry. We were fit. We were just before we went to commercial break. We were talking about your first victory being you had no pressure because you was kind of like running blind. Can I say that? Mm-hmm. Kind of came into a, 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 a running atmosphere. Didn't know, you know, anything about any of the, the other runners. What sort of shape you're in? And your fitness carried you right to first place finish. Is that an accurate assessment? Yeah, I think so. Oh. It, it's a long time ago. Um, <laughs> I don't remember too much about it. Yeah. But um, I think maybe the second time um, Vernon Tankard um, trained me. And, and to this day, whenever I train on the hills, I always think of Vernon because he used to make me run up. He used to make me do mile re- um, hill repeats up Burnt Hill and then push on for another 50 meters. And that's how I train people that I coach. And that's how I train myself. So Vernon is always in my head. Every time I do a hill, I think of Vernon. Yeah. I think that's something. So your success brought you a coach from out of the blue to then give you some, some technical training for hill training. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah well, and the well. other mantra is always down to donna may because she always tells me to relax so when i'm training in the wind donna may always used to say to me relax and that's another <laughs> one of my mantras so two key people um donna may and vernon from the swans who um who are always in my head 
um, let alone Victoria Fiddick. Um, you know, she's she was my my pal over there. She made a lot of things happen for me. Yes. Um, so between Victoria and Donna May and Vernon, um, Bermuda is always with me. Oh, awesome. I mean, that's a that's such an awesome tribute, you know, to give give praise where praise is due. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so just before we go and talk about your second victory, because uh, I know that's a little, little bit different. There's more expectation, press the, you know, a bit more pressure. You're, you're now known. You're now known for sure. If you weren't known before 2006, May 24, you were definitely known after May 24, uh -huh. 2006. Um, but the so the heat in the in that in your first race, the heat didn't affect you, even though you said you had been like training in cooler weather, weather temperatures here mm -hmm. in the UK for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So now you're one May 24th, you're getting, I'm sure people that didn't know you are perhaps um, singing out to you, well done, congratulating you, et cetera, et cetera. So did you then continue? Because, you know, Bermuda has a has a, a calendar of, of many races. So did you um, continue to compete in a lot of the, the, the local shorter races from oh, after yes. May 24th? Yeah, all the time, all the time. I think we did every single race on the calendar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was something to do on a Sunday, but it's all it all out for the training. I don't want to use I don't want to use this term, but can I classify you as a running junkie? Um, yeah, at the time. <laughs> no, and 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 I've never won such big trophies in my whole entire life, and they're all on the attic. You know, for me, to just things big. What with the prize money and the trophies, I was like, yeah. oh, my word, you know, wow. you get nothing like that in the UK. <laughs> nothing. So, yeah, yeah, I've got some tremendous trophies on the attic and the stuff that we got for May 24th, the silver fruit balls, beautiful, beautiful. They're just they're just lovely. Awesome. Awesome. So you're now the champion, defending champion for May 24th, 2006. The months, the weeks are ticking on, and now we're coming around to um, obviously leading uh, towards May 24, 2007. So what was your training like? Did you change any of your training between your first victory and your second victory? Tell us a little bit, little bit about that. Oh, your eating habits? No, nothing. No, you just keep doing what you always do. So I remember um, the one thing I do remember about it, and it was a long time ago, was... Um, being on the track with swans and we were having to do 10 one mile repeats um, and we were there all night and um, you know I remember like the rugby com players come in to start to train and they would go home and people were coming and going and we were still there <laughs> doing 10 one mile repeats I think that's a, the hardest training session I've ever done um, so yeah you, you know you extend on the on the mileage but running um, eating just stays the same um, and yeah. And just so trying to keep yourself self fit, really. Awesome. So I remember you mentioned Mac as well. So you train with, with Mac likewise? Yes. Yeah, I think it used to be Wednesday night with Steve Burgess. Yes. And then I think we did Tuesdays and Thursdays with Swans. Have you uh, have you been in touch with Steve since or, or it's been a while? No, no. I just keep in touch with Victoria. <laughs> You know, Steve is still the coach of Mac today. Yeah, so I understand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's a formidable character. Yeah. He has a no, lot of history. Yes, no, no doubt about it. So leading into May 24th, 2007, now I guess, you know, in sports, you know, people say, oh, there's a book. The bullseye is always on the favorites back. So now you came into May 24th, 2007 as the favorite. Did you feel the pressure and and also did you know who else were other contenders? Like obviously Karen Badash had, you know, you had just beaten her by a few seconds the year before. So who were the contenders? Who were the, the, the ladies that you were perhaps looking, you know, to compete against during the, your second go around? Um, definitely Victoria. I don't really remember anyone else at the time. Um, I remember the pressure and having to stop listening to the radio and not read the newspapers because I get quite wound up about <laughs> things like that. Um, and I remember my dad being there and him saying to me, I expect you to win. And, and then he <laughs> cried because I thought I don't want to let him down. That's um, all the pressure you need. Absolutely. But yeah. And, and the great thing about being in the lead is having the, the bike with you. 
Um, and, you know, I remember on one of the tapes, you can see me chatting away to the, um, to the guy on the bike whilst being videoed, um, <laughs> you know, and that was, that was such great fun. And it's something that would never, ever happen to me in, in any other race. But in the you know, it, it, it was you, such great You were fun. a celebrity, the one, once, yeah. once you've been once, you become a celebrity. You let it be no mm -hmm. mistake about it. You, you were, that's who everyone was looking for. Dawn, who is the Dawn Richardson? You know, so you, if you were in the Dawn Richardson after 2006, leading up to 2007, you definitely were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that race, how did you feel? What you remember about it? Um, in terms of the first race, you kind of was, you know, you was running blind. You had no pressure. Was there pressure in that race for you? Not that I remember. I think, I think I just wanted to enjoy it and to soak up the atmosphere and, you know, and acknowledge the amount of people that come out to support and, and give up the day. I just really wanted to enjoy it. Um, and that's what I remember about it. Um, yeah, just the support was always phenomenal. So of both titles, anyone you prefer one any one over the other or what what's the value which which value, I think you value I, more? I remember my first one the most because of how it ended um and being the underdog um and then i remember my third one where i came second the, the second one i don't really remember to be fair <laughs> interesting yeah and and we just go right into um so again well on you 2006 2007 and, and now 2008 so of course the name Ashley S. Wanick, or maybe I don't know if she was Ashley Cooper at that time, but certainly Ashley S. Wanick being the victor. Tell us about what you remember about that race. Um, I, I saw um, the time I think, difference. Of I think everyone expected Ashley to win. Um, so did I. So I think it was probably just lovely. I had no pressure on me whatsoever. Um, and I think, I don't know where my times were on any of the three races, but I was probably quite a bit slow on the third event just because I had no pressure on me. Um, yeah. I knew Ashley was a far better runner than I was. Um, so yeah, I probably enjoyed that one the most, to be fair, um, because there was no pressure. Let me give you um, some times. The first, your first race, you won it in 129.37, on our 29.37, oh, <laughs> you did. I couldn't find the results for 2007, and I searched high and low. But... When you, but the race you came second, you were on 126.03, and Ashley won it in 123.30. So she was Gosh. somewhat two and a half minutes ahead of you in, in that yeah. in the race that she won. Um, but your time for the for your, your third attempt was faster than definitely your first your first go around. Oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I and I tried my hardest to find 2007. I just couldn't find it any, anywhere. Um, so forgive oh, I'll, me, Dawn. I'll have it on the forgive me. I've kept all the press cuttings. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll let me know. When you know, somewhere. let me know. Because I'm still, okay. I still not not quite happy not finding it before I interviewed today. Oh, I'll yeah. have a look. But 126 is quite good. <laughs> very good. Very, very good. <laughs> my PB was 136. So that's still 10 minutes faster than my PB <laughs> over that distance. So yeah. So much, much respect to you. Um Thank you. so you okay, so that so now you were came uh, you won two titles and you played second and third so after that uh did you did you leave Bermuda shortly after that or what what um because I you didn't compete Bermuda in April 1st of April 2009 I left yeah I knew I had to come back to the UK in the spring um I couldn't face the British winter so I <laughs> came home on on um, April's Fool's Day yeah, yeah. I also did a little bit of research, and um, if I remember, not if I remember, but um, during, uh, before you left Bermuda, I believe a couple of runners, including yourself, a contingent of about 20, attended a marathon in Toronto, Canada in frigid conditions. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh, tell I us, do. Tell us briefly, and, and, and a lady named the Dawn Richardson won the female category in the marathon in a sub yeah. three hour clocking. Oh, did I? Was a sub three? Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I caused chaos in that race. I got told off at the end because <laughs> I didn't think I was in the lead. And I had a big argument with the lead bike. 
um because I, I knew there was a petite blonde lady on the start line with me and, and I hadn't overtaken her I don't know where she'd gone to but the guy was with me and I said I don't know why you're with me because I'm not in the lead and he said well you are I'm, and we had this big argument <laughs> and I was like I'm not anyway so that that was it but um he must have been able to radio back to the finishing line that I was coming and that I was saying I wasn't the first female. I crossed the finishing line. I'm like, I'm not the first female, so I caused chaos. So they had to go through some of the footage and then they realised that, you know, I you, was you, you, this blonde, this small blonde lady. I don't know where she went to, but she was definitely on the start line with me and she was definitely <laughs> ahead of me. So whether she'd gone the wrong way, I don't know. But yeah. I didn't expect to... Um, to be to the, win. the, the but winner. Victoria, Fiddick. Victoria brought us all together. We were promoting, um, promoting Bermuda race weekend. Um, and I always remember being sat on the bus going to the start line with Victoria. And I didn't know which wristband to use, whether I should try and go sub three or go for a 310, because I knew there was going to be press interest. And um, Victoria just looked at me. She just said, if you don't try, you'll never know. So I'll put my sub three wristband on. Now you've said sub three, I remember yeah, that vividly. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, Victoria always said to me, if you don't try, you'll never know. So, yes. Yeah. And to be fair, it felt so easy. It was such an easy race because we've come from the humidity to the coolness and it was a cold morning and it just felt so easy. Yeah, but yeah interesting. That, that, was, that was Victoria Fiddick for you. She, she made me win. Toronto oh, Marathon. Well, you can't. I'm sure you congratulate her. So as we as we um, wind down this uh, this interview, Dawn, um, just tell us briefly what are you doing now? Are you still running? Are you running for club? Uh, I think you mentioned something about qualifying for something coming up. Tell us a little bit about that before we. So um, I've run for the Quakers ever since um, the um, the late nineties and Quakers um, as a running club in Darlington, UK? In Darlington, yeah. Um, yes. And um, we also have a master's association in the UK. And um, in 2019, I qualified to run for England um, as over 45. The race didn't happen because of COVID. And then I've just re-qualified to run as over 50. And the race is in May in Chester for the half marathon. So for the first time, I'll be wearing my England vest. I just <laughs> arrived in the post this week. <laughs> well, well done and so when does this race when is this race being held it's third weekend in may in may so so you're training so you're tapering or you're tapering your training foot and this is a, a what's the distance it's half marathon okay so, yeah, how's, your um, how, how's your training going towards that now yeah really good really good yeah i'm kind of doing 16 miles on a sunday um and then I'll start to drop it back down towards the end of April um, and hopefully rest up for, um, for May. Awesome. So Dawn, give us a few parting words to uh, your fan base hit, uh, in Bermuda. Any parting words before we <laughs> <got one>. conclude? <laughs> any words of inspiration to any other body runners? A few words? Oh, just to try it. Um, just, you know, if you don't ever try, you'll never succeed. And just try, but you know, the three years in Bermuda was phenomenal. I had some brilliant friends that made things happen for me, and it was just the best time ever. I loved it. <laughs> well, you heard you heard that from a two-time May 24th champion, Dawn Richardson. She says, just try it. You will never know unless you try. Well, I'm Larry Dunlop. We hope you've enjoyed uh, this talk with a two-time champion. And we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.